What's up guys, this is Foeden or Foe2k, uh, I've got another tutorial today, um, which is in Buju about motion tracking. Um, how you can build your scene up inside of Buju to make your track a bit more, well, how to, I don't know, how to match your scale, shall I say. So if you want to put a person onto your scene and you don't know how big that person should be just looking at a picture, this is a method that's going to help you. And I don't know why, I just think it looks quite nice, especially if you've got a good track. So first of all, you have to go into your Xbox and record your cinematic, um, do all that kind of stuff, and then import it into Buju. So I'm going to do that now. So do that. And it's 59.94 frames. Apply that. Uh, just click No. And close. There we go. So we've got our little scene here. And what I might hopefully, to, sorry, might hopefully do is get an animation of something, I don't know, either a guy... Or some sort of superhero, some sort of like little animation clip of a guy sort of running across this roof, roofing, jumps up onto the wall, sort of runs this direction, and sort of holds the vine, swings round, and then carries on running along these windows. Um, and if he was just doing that in an animation program, you think, fuck me, how am I going to do that? And you're going to have to try and build squares to make it look like the building and try and do it like that and it'll just go terribly so um, first of all what we need to do is we just need to do our track um, and if you want to come to advanced you come up with this little picture box which shows you basically the sensitivity so you whack that all the way up it will take a little bit longer to track but that's what's needed in this uh, tutorial and where it says max search distance I usually go to 50% which is the maximum um, and then I just click start and then that's going to track, uh, we're going to want to get our camera solve, so we'll do that after, and then we're going to work on building geometry mesh um, to scale our track. And when we put that into Cinema 4D later, you're going to see how important that is. Uh, so let's wait for this to do its thing. But yes, yeah, so I'm sorry I haven't been doing tutorials lately, I've just been busy um, starting uni, just getting work sorted out. I mean, I've, I've tried to put out a few videos, um, so yeah, um, more to come. Uh, when I start uni I'm going to be learning Maya, so possibly we're going to transition onto that, maybe get a few more advanced and more professional tutorials coming out, so that should be good, but uh, not straight away, because obviously the thing is I, I've been posting speed drawings and that and the thing is when, when you do like an animation course you need to have a good art skill um thing is i don't actually have that good art skill, not as good as i want to be anyway or compared to others um so that's why i'm doing the practice because i'll be doing that pretty much the first semester of my um my uni so we'll see how all that goes so hopefully that will get better maybe put a few more of those drawings out but we'll see Right, come on, area. Lots of points, lots of points. I don't know why, but once I, I tried this effect, and it, well, it's not an effect, but tried this technique, it actually looks quite nice. I don't know why, even though you, it's not gonna, it's not a perfect, you know, outcome, but it does look surprisingly quite. I don't know. It's just like, oh, that looks good. <laughs> I want to play around with that. All right. So there we go. We will come to about here. Go to our camera solve, optimize camera path smoothness, and start that. That shouldn't take too long. I hope. Obviously, the shorter the cinematic, the better. I mean, I did actually extend this cinematic. It was going to be he was going to run off the wall, springboard onto the lamppost and then fly up into the sky. It's going to be like a Superman type thing. Um, but the camera solved fuck, so I just deleted half the pictures that rendered the second half, so then I was just left with this track here. Uh, but it works just as fine, especially for a tutorial anyway. It's good enough. Come on, come on. I get really impatient about stuff like this, I don't know why. Yeah, it really annoys me. Okay, good. So there you go. Sorry, there you go. Lots and lots of points. Good. I like that. Right. So basically, what we're going to do now, um, 
we're going to set our scene geometry. So we're going to uh, sorry establish where the floor is. So I'm going to grab this point to. We'll, we'll go that point, and we'll just hit that on our x-axis. Add another one. Go to Z or Z. Click the same one. And what I want to do is I want to pick a point which is on the same line. Go for that one. So connect and delete that one. Add a, an origin and I'll just pop that in the corner as well. Connect that and then click update a few times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know why that everyone said that. So, and then there you go. Now you don't want to do your floor along this roofing because it's at an angle. So if you look at it from a real world perspective, that is perfect because that's all aligned for the Y, X, and Z. So that's what you're looking for, especially for this track. And I can delete that because I know it's all fine. So that's all sorted, ready for exporting. But there's just one thing we need to do now is build our mesh. So what I do is I come up to a good sort of viewport. And just all you do is you select points. Go there. And once you've got all your points and you go 3D tasks, generate mesh using current frame, there you go, you have a wall. And what you can do is you can export that as an OBJ format. And when you come to import that into Cinema 4D, you sort of have your scale model of your track. Um, so if I just do a few more, so do that one. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect, but as much as you can establish what is So what is the roof? What is the wall? What is the window? That is enough to create an animation. So there we go. Um, what else can we do? Oh, we can do the roof. We'll go there. Generate that. And it, it, I don't know. It's just a, a nice looking effect, in my opinion, anyway. Um, then we'll just do this. So I'll just do a few more, just so you can see. But you do need to be careful what one, what points you are selecting. So I always run the sequence through and then see how it goes. There you go. So that's looking pretty fine, actually. Yeah. Um, we'll go ahead and just do another wall down here. It doesn't matter how many points you select. Uh, that's not a problem. We'll do another one here, just so you can just build an idea, like build your idea of what it's going to to help with. Because all I want to do is I want to have a guy running across this floor, springboard onto this wall, and run around this wall. So basically, these three large ones are the only ones I need. But just for tutorial purposes, I'm just doing the rest. Um, uh, we'll do another one here on this wall. I think we'll leave it at that. Don't want to make it too long because I do have to leave for work in half an hour. So yeah, it looks all good. Right. So what you do is you originally come to your export camera, go to browse, and I'll just do this. Call it Tut and go to Cinema 4D. Yep, save that and save. And then you can just go further to export and then go export meshes. And again, I'll call this tut. Ah, oh, I don't know where that saved to. I didn't browse. Oh no, that's, that's not there, is it? Okay, that's fine. We'll just do another one. Tut, OBJ, brilliant. Oh, my audacity. And, oh, bloody hell. Alright. Let's boot up Cinema 4D now. Oops. We'll import the, the tutorial file. Oops, I've just done that wrong. Now the thing is, where you would usually go to export and you'll go scale scene by 100, um, I didn't do that uh, because I found a problem 
So I just kept it at one. And then when you come to bring this in, sorry, uh, yes, put one as well. You want to keep it all the same. Because when you export the meshes, it doesn't export at the the scale by 10. It just scales at 1. And that's the problem that I ran into. I don't know how to fix that. So I just click 1. And then, bring that over here. File, Merge. And we'll go to our tucked OBJ file. So then play it. And we want to put the background in just so we can see. So come in to, yep, standoff, click the first one, click no, click on the picture, animation and calculate. So that's the picture sequence now loaded into Cinema 4D. Make a background and plonk that one on there. There you go. So as you can see, perfectly aligned. We can now scroll through. Oh, hang on. There's a problem. Um, all right, that's cool. Because the scene is too small, the camera is passing through through the meshes, but that's fine. Now we know it's scaled properly, we can just group all the meshes and the camera. Don't worry about the background, that's fine. And then we can just size that one up, just drag it up, just drag, drag, drag. You can see the grids are getting much smaller because we're zooming out. There we go. And that will fix that problem because your camera's not passing Oh, I've made a big mistake. Oops. Alright, um, if that does happen, group all your meshes separately. Oops. And then you want to size that down. And what you want to do, oops, you just want to size that down until it fits. Wait, what the fuck is going on here? My camera is literally... Right, scrap that. Let's just completely bugger this. And I'll do it the way I did last time. I thought I was going to be a bit clever and try and avoid it, but maybe not. Export camera, go to 100. Maybe that is the reason. Maybe you do have to go to 100 and then manually fix it. Let's have a look, shall we? So touch C4D. Let's replace that. Thing is, if I make a mistake in the tutorial, I'm not going to cut it out and whatnot. I'm going to just carry on and correct it because that's how people will learn. Um, so yeah, I fucked up. Oh well. Um, right, let's go into Cinema 4D again and we'll reload the 100 scale, which I've just saved. And then you will have to do scale by 10 because that's what it was by default. There you go. So yeah, we've got our track. Load our picture sequence in again. Add the background. And merge the meshes. Mesh, uh, sorry, tut OBJ. And there we go. It's really small. You can't see it. It's like, oh shit, where has it gone? So this is how I fixed it. And it still works just as fine. You just group all those together and you size it up. You keep coming up. Look, there it is. And what you want to do is you just want to Go through on your picture sequence, there you go, that's good enough. And you just want to make sure that's scaled properly to about to about there. And the reason I know it's that is because this wall here. So I can scale that until this line reaches this wall because that's where it ended. And there you go. So now if I just go through. Oops, and carry on. That all looks pretty nice. So, I can now come out of my camera solve, hide that actually, hide the background, and there we go, I've got my walls and my floor. So, I can now say import a model. Um, I'll just quickly do that. I'm not going to animate it, but I'll just show you. Oops, wrong one. Oh, I forgot to hit. Uh, we'll go to GTA 5, uh, we'll pop Franklin and uh, take off the lights, we don't need that. Has he got textures? He has not got textures. Find somebody else then. I know somebody, I know what does have textures. Uh, where is it? 
Advanced Warfare and Atlas PMC. Oh, for fuck's sake, why am What I do is when I get... God, this is so... Hey, there we go. This tutorial is like... <laughs> you can tell it's just like literally try it. Right, move. There we are. So if I just plonk this guy on the roof... So as I was talking earlier about scale, you can tell he's a bit too small for that scene. So, you can now size him up to how you want him to be. I'd say that was about right, so let's go into our... Oops. Unhide our background. Hide our mesh. Um, yeah, I'd say he was kind of... I'd, I'd say a bit bigger, because if you're looking at the window... Let's pop him to three. Um, yeah, I'd say that was about right. So he's sitting on the the roof there and so forth so now we've got the scale sorted like I said we can just hide the camera hide the background and we can just literally work off the mesh to make him run along that wall so you know spin round so you've got a perfectly good sort of 3D environment to animate with with a correct scale and that will just make your animation seem a bit more realistic in terms of size and smoothness so i hope this helped guys sorry it was a bit sloppy um but the thing is i i, I like sloppy tutorials because it, it helps it helps me anyway because you run into the problems and then you think oh shit what do i do especially if you're a beginner that i don't know the program so then i just carry on and i fix it and then people would hopefully understand so if they run into that problem they know exactly what to do so there you go guys like and comment and i'll see you next video peace